we're gonna try and tackle this back wall. There was some water damage. I've got all the moldy Luon removed and there doesn't seem to be any real framing to this back wall. Typically you'd have a corner, a solid corner like this aluminum frame around this window. You'd have something similar in the corner to fasten to, but that must be hidden back here somewhere. I don't have access to it. My plan is to router out this foam insulation and put in a solid corner. No solid framing on the bottom either. There's nothing for me to tie into when I put the replacement Luon back on. So we're gonna play with it, see what we can come up with. I've measured off this wall an inch and a half. That blue line that I popped with the chalk box, that's where I'm gonna plunge cut in with my multi-tool and router out this section and I'll be putting an inch and a half of pressure treated two by in that space. I know it looks like there's still wood on the wall and to some degree there is. This is just a thin layer of the plywood Luon that is glued to the foam. I have sanded it down. I mean, this is just a paper thin layer. Right behind this layer is this foam. I was able to use this open pocket in the corner of the window to figure out how deep the wall actually was. It's about an inch and a half deep. So I'm gonna make an inch and a half mark with tape on this multi-tool blade to keep me from plunging through the exterior of the camper. So while ripping out that inch and a half strip of foam, this panel came out. The, it appears that the water damage had ruined the adhesion on the back there. And uh, I don't know, let's see what happens next. Hopefully no other surprises. A lot of this foam insulation was coming out. I went ahead and removed everything that was loose or delaminated. There's still a little bit right here that's not connected to the foam anymore. I was able to finally find a solid corner and it's tucked about a half inch back. I think what I'll do is take inch and a half by inch and a half block and use some self-tapping screws and fasten it to this and it'll come out and I'll just have a solid corner then to work with when I replace this inside panel. And then there's this black, what I thought was also metal or something structural, but it turns out it's just conduit for the electrical wires that go to the marker lights on the exterior of the camper. Here it is again, running along the aluminum frame and then you can see the wires that are coming out to the back tail lights. All right, so this is what we're left with. I've removed everything that was dead or loose and it doesn't leave me much. I'm gonna add a two by here for extra support and something to nail to for when I replace this inside wall. Since I had to remove so much, it's left me with this delaminated surface. It has no support, so I'll be putting replacement plywood or Luan back in its place. The trickiest part about gluing this back together is coming up with a clamping system to put even pressure on both the inside and the outside of this wall. Luckily it's around the window, so I can use a lot of clamps here, but I'll still need pressure down low and in here on the sides as well. So that's gonna be tricky. I've got a nice cutting station set up. I brought a bunch of scraps out of the basement. I'm gonna start ripping this material down to inch and a half by inch and a half. 
I'm not going to use entire 2x4s because this is lightweight construction. Pre-made cut list, ready to go. Here's the quarter inch plywood that I purchased to take place of all the rotten plywood that I took out. It's just a floor underlayment, Luan. Got all my new pieces of glue on test fitted. It's just a bunch of strips, small cuts, trying to just puzzle this thing together. Test fit of the new studs. I've got a solid corner to nail to. I even got one across the bottom. My new stud in the center of the window. And I have a solid two by across the top of the window. ahead and replaced all the foam that I took out. The foam that I left in here I didn't remove because it was really secured well to the wall and it had just been a, more of a mess and hassle trying to rip that foam off since it was attached so well. Here's a quick preview of the clamping system that I'm going to use on the interior. And there's the exterior again. I've got a bunch of half inch plywood scraps that I had in the basement. Most of these were 2x12s, threw them on the table saw, ripped them down to 3 quarter inch wedging blocks. And I'm going to try and laminate this all at once. It's going to be... It's going to be challenging. My wife's going to help me, so I'm going to disassemble what I've got here. This was just a test fit to make sure that everything was going to work. So I'm going to tear this down, glue it all, and put it back together as quickly as I can. So to the part of the video where we glued everything back together wasn't really that in depth. There wasn't time to really break down step by step what we were doing because of the amount of time we had before the glue would set up. But let's just assume that this was the plywood and that's the first thing that went on after we started gluing. The plywood was glued to the fiberglass and then the foam on top of it. So just a quick tip on gluing. When you're using an adhesive like that, it's best to do glue patterns in circles with the caulk gun. And what that's gonna do is create suction cups. So while the glue is still setting up, it is suction cupping to whatever surface you're gluing it to. Another pattern that I like to use is a like a figure eight style pattern. also just making suction cups and if these don't connect I'll just come back through with another bead right here just to close up those ends to create those suction cups I learned this from a friend of mine from a1 construction show you guys the products I was using to 
glue this wall back together. It turns out after I already bought these products that there is an epoxy that it's an epoxy kit. It comes with a long syringe and uh, a long hose and you can inject the epoxy in between the fiberglass panel and the plywood and kind of relaminate the plywood back together. It's so the epoxy is so wet it just infuses the fibers of the separated plywood and uh, when you clamp it, it makes it one solid piece again. I did not know about that kit when I started so I already purchased some stuff. I'm in the construction world all the time so I just purchased some products that I was pretty confident that would get the job done. I've got a Loctite here. This is rated to, you can put this on foam, wood, it has a long list here of things that you can put it on. Yeah, wood, OSB, drywall, brick, concrete, masonry, stone, marble, granite, metal, vinyl, PVC, and foam board. Because I know that some adhesives will actually melt the foam board. Uh, this one does not melt it, it says it sticks to it. And then I got this other Loctite product. The only reason I bought this one was because it specifically said on it that it works on aluminum, so I wanted to get a good adhesion to the aluminum frame. This one said metal. I probably didn't need to buy this. This was probably overkill to buy this tube. I could have gotten away with just the tubes of this that I was using. So there you have it. Everything's been laminated back together. I've got plenty of glue behind the foam. I've got my extra studs added in, which will be nice when I add a shiplap look to this. I have plenty of things now to fasten the shiplap to got the window put back in. Just a key note, when you're taking this window trim out, it's held down by a few screws, more like a hundred screws that go around the frame. When you take this off, be sure that you have lots of tape on the outside of the camper that's holding the window in place. Because once you take this trim off, there's nothing that's actually holding the window in place. You want to have tape in place to secure the window and when I put the window back in, since I don't actually have the new wall in here, I had to put a quarter inch shim around the entire frame in order to draw the window tight to the outside. So before, when I didn't have the shims in place, there was a, about an eighth inch gap here because the trim couldn't fully draw the window tight to the exterior of the camper. And I wanted it tight because I wanted to go ahead and silicone it. You can't see really, but there is a clear silicone that I've put in place here to just ensure that there is no leaks coming in. I didn't buy a replacement seal for the inside of this window. The seal looked like it was in good shape. I'm pretty sure that most of the leaking was coming from this corner trim. And uh, I took all these screws out, cleaned them off, coated them in silicone and gently snugged them back up and I have a new trim piece to go in here. And that's where I believe most of the leaking was coming from. But just in case any leaking was coming from the window, I put a clear silicone bead around that entire edge. I'm also gonna come back and run some silicone just on the top edge. There's weep holes in the window. Like here you can see weep holes where the water is supposed to escape. If water does get in the window, it's designed that way. But I wanna try to prevent any water from getting inside the window at all. After all, that was a ton of work. I do not want to go through that again. It looks great. This is a solid wall. 